Norm Benning is one of those guys that's been doing it the hard way basically forever. Norm Benning is the epitome of arc and what it really represents. He's been racing in NASCAR for the better part of 30 years, but there's really not that much about the guy once you leave the racetrack. Today we're going to go over to Norm's house with his race shop behind it. Norm's going to show us his shop, trophies, old pictures. He's going to take us to where he ran the old Sobe car. I'm particularly excited about this one because Norm is from Pittsburgh. I got to tell you, this is my favorite guy, Norm Benning from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's one of the automobile racing club of America. I grew up in Pittsburgh and nobody there pays attention to NASCAR at all, it seemed, growing up. But there was always one guy who was from there, and that was Norm Benning. Level Green, Pennsylvania. This is Norm Benning Racing. Sorry for the mess, but we're right in the middle of, you see we just finished half of the roof. Two floors, you don't even want to go upstairs. <laughs> but this is the Speedway truck, and this is something I'll probably never get rid of. It's, it's really treated me good over the years. I've led races with it. You know, one year I was running sixth with, I don't know, 18 laps to go, something like that, and the manual fuel pump went bad. What is the backstory of that chassis? Brian Scott. Remember Brian Scott? Mm -hmm. That's his truck. Huh. That's how old it is. But for some reason, if you, you look back in the archives, it's always always in the top 10 somewhere in the race. Hmm. Never qualified very well, but it ran really good in the draft. When was the last race you ran it in? It'll be two years. I cross-eyed Al out of Decatur, Alabama, sponsoring me. And they were really... I finished... Uh, 15th or something like that. I can't remember if they were, they were pleased. They got a lot of TV time and they said they'll, they'll do it again. So you never know, you might see them at Daytona in February. Is that what the deal is now? You are still running SB2s and taking the, the penalty? Well, no, I'll be running our, the uh, Elmore engines now. Uh, but that's, there's $300,000 worth of SB2s sitting here. There's a couple of them are, buried over there yeah that's what uh reminded me of doing this is we were at promoter and dennis said something about norm bending and i'm like oh norm bending the pittsburgh guy and he yeah. gave me your number this one engine here is actually is a jeff gordon 18 degree and i'm sorry all this stuff's piled up on there that's an that came right out of hendrick i ran it a long time ago on the short tracks I, I have the Hendrick valve covers and everything else for it. That's really neat. For somebody that wants to make one of their show cars authentic, mm -hmm. that's got all the Hendrick numbers on it. Is that the sign back there? Yeah, that's it. I don't know if we can grab an Hendrick. Let's grab an Hendrick knot. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's probably good enough. You can use their imagination. All this stuff you see here came from Alcoa. Uh, I bought it out of their hangar. They closed up their flight department in Alcoa, in Allegheny County huh. Airport. It still says Alcoa hangar on it. Yeah. You don't see bending bricks manufactured in the United States anymore. No. Well, none of them are. I really don't want everybody to see my mess. It's not a mess. No, this is not, this is not a mess at all over here. This is like a... It looks like a, work gets done here. there's a workbench with nothing on it. That's pretty egg good. Yeah. <laughs> I never have a workbench that's this clean. Is that your engine pulling? It's one of them. That arm is 14 feet long. You know, swing 180 degrees. I actually lifted up my hot tub with it. <laughs> my hot tub with it. Did you have a Sobe deck lid or something? Yeah, upstairs. Oh. I mean, if you really, really want it bad, I'll... I think, I think people would want to see it. People love old pieces of race cars. Let me, let me, let me survey the situation, see how hard it is to get at. <laughs> There's like 300 of those up here. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. Oh, that's the late model roof. Sorry about that. I wish I had the camera on a little bit ago. This spring just came flying. <laughs> Downstairs. <laughs> this I'll show you. The, the trunk lid buried. But this is actually the roof off of that late model. Oh, wow. That's cool. What year would have this been from? Jeez. That, that thing won a third of the races 
that it entered. Is there a significance behind 11? The guy that owned the, the, the dirt cart, that was his number forever. Huh. Him and his brother used to race in uh, Reggie Vasco. Owned it and I drove it. And uh, we were a great team. He would maintain that car. We very seldom ever had a failure, parts failure or anything. And then I was real good at making it handle. We went out the first night. Remember, Joel's machine built the engines. And uh, we got the engine at 10 o'clock in the morning or something. He said, do, do not try to go out and race tonight. Wait till next week. We took it home. It was still warm <laughs> from the dyno. And we put it in this late model. It went out, started fourth. I have videotapes all this stuff, but started fourth, had the lead going into turn one. Let every lap won the race <laughs> the first night. You'd hang that thing up in here. Well, when the walls get done, all that stuff's going to be hanging up. When I was trying to race and do this at all, it just doesn't work. It's <laughs> not enough for me to go around. But it's just incredible, this mess. I mean, the, the Bellahaw things and clutches and blah, 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 blah. But this, that's, you know, this shocks. Cool. Yeah, it is. I should have wiped it off before you took pictures. It's uh, it's got authentic patina. People like yeah, this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you got some belts up there. Oh, you, don't need a <laughs> you got any X pipes up there? We can build a race car with what's up here. <laughs> That's the cool stuff. Whoa! What fell now? Did you build those stairs yourself? Yep. I love my Harley. I do a lot more riding now. Kyle Petty's asked me several times to go on their rides with them. One of these days I'll do it. And I've got the boat, the scarab boat. It goes 85 miles an hour in the water. Supposedly, this is what they use down in Miami to chase all the drug runners. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard some stories about that. So, And I bought that one down in Florida. For people who don't know, what is your uh, day job? I fly airplanes. I'm a commercial pilot, but I never flew commercial. I flew corporate. Flew for mine safety and corporate jet, and people like that. Teach people how to fly. And yeah, see, I didn't know that until uh, Dennis told us. So this is like, stuff's cool. You're just like, you know, regular guy. Except you happen to be a, a, a NASCAR <laughs> racer and have been for yeah. such a long time. And uh, I have bragging rights. Uh, the fact that that year the cross-eyed owl was there all of my crew members were from nasa they were all nasa engineers how did you and how did you find that well one friend of mine who helped build the shuttle he asked us the other that i have a huge amount of fans at nasa for some reason <laughs> and uh it's because they all wanted to go and so we had six of the guys that helped build the, the shuttle on our crew. Hmm. And that was that was bragging rights. Yeah, that's cool. Because they I'd ask them to do something and they'd do it better than I could ever do it. And then they'd take it apart because they wouldn't like it. They'd <laughs> do it better. So it, it was a lot of fun working with those guys. That picture there is I had to pull at the World Dirt Track Championship years ago. Went down there, there were 136 cars. We qualified on the pole. Is that Pensboro? Yeah. So this is the car I remember when I was a little kid going to ARCA races. Yeah, I dug a bunch of stuff out. You can look through it. What did this car used to be? To be honest with you, I don't remember. <laughs> They're just old cup cars, every one of them. Man, what a great run for Norm Benning, longtime contender. Again, underfunded team. I don't believe he came in and changed tires one time tonight, guys. Didn't you run the uh, 84? Because at one time you had 84 lumber. Just yeah, there's pictures in there. Uh, I had 84 lumber at the brickyard the first year. You Which, still have that fire suit? Upstairs, as a matter of fact. That's cool. I a lot of the uniforms, Sobe uniforms. And that's why that's my dad. <laughs> I felt that picture. Why does his helmet say Ben? That was his, that's my nickname too. Oh. Ben. I was, he was Big Ben, I was Little Ben. Oh. oh is that why there's a clock on the... On his I, I don't know about the <laughs> it's you know I went around when he did that <laughs> I don't know who, who designed that but they should have been shot 
<laughs> <laughs> so was this the car that you said was Earnhardt's bird car? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it was. It was the one he hit the bird at. He was leading the race. Kind of ruined his day. Yes, I noticed that in some of these pictures. It's still got the... Um, the red interior. Yeah. How did you come to acquire that car? I actually got it through, uh, I believe it was Dave, Dave Marcus somehow got me hooked up with that car. Hmm. And, uh, you know, Dave worked with them quite a bit. I actually led that race and the side window came out with uh, 18 laps to go. They black flagged me. And that's the, that's the car I ran at the Brickyard, the 84 Lumber. And then we ran it again at Charlotte. How'd the 84 Lumber deal come about? Because they're local, aren't they? They're local. I've, that's why I had that number for so many years, because Joe Hardy kept saying he was going to get involved, and he ended up getting involved, but not for a whole lot of money. Hmm. But then it was, it was crazy. Like two weeks later, Lowe's was involved. They came out, and Home Depot got involved, and it was all because I came out with the E4 Lumber. They're the third biggest in the country. That's interesting. So the other two had to come out, and they got big money. I, I didn't. <laughs> but uh, and then what did they decide they weren't gonna try well, to compete with them did. or what? I mean, they they sponsored me here and there, but they just never never spent enough money to make a big difference. And where were you preparing these cars at back in this era? They were all down Mooresville. So you lived here, but had uh, did you have like a different team putting those together for you? Yeah, I mean, I always had people. All my stuff always came from down there in Mooresville. That was a banquet there, Arca Banquet. I was I was up to third in the points that year. Ended up fifth in the points. And that's the cup car that came from DEI. Back then, how did you buy cars from teams like that? Did you just know people or? Well, I, I had Shodine Holmes out of Chicago sponsoring me. And he's the one that was paying the bills. And, at the time, that was when the COT cars came out, and that was, I thought, was the best car I could get. So we went and ran Daytona with it, and, and then that was Charlotte. Also, I ran, the, I don't know how many total cup races I ran, but a lot of them were Daytona and the Winston Open, which they don't consider that a race because they don't give you points. But I, I ran at least 10 of those Winston Opens. And did you have uh, 57 because of Heinz? Right. And <laughs> we had a board meeting, and there was there was one lady on the board that just, I couldn't get her to do that, so that Heinz football field was the money I, I was supposed to get. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> she, uh, they spent all that money on, on the Heinz field hmm. back then. And now it's not Heinz field anymore. Yeah, now it's Jackie Shar or something. Something, but, I don't even know what yeah, it is. I don't even know. But it was such a perfect fit. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh, they're from Pittsburgh. And yeah. Oh, I tried, I don't know how many years. And then, like I said, I did, that's why I had the 84, because 84 lumber. This picture's my dad, that's why I brought it out. I figured it was. Yeah, he was in the Hall of Fame. The, the, uh, he got the Dapper Dan Award, which is uh, all the news people, news writers. Every year they they vote on different people from different sports and the year my dad got the Dapper Dan Award, he was sitting right next to Roberto Clemente. Wow. Who also got it. That's cool. And I don't know how old I was in, 10, 10 or 12 or something, but that was so cool to see him sitting up there on stage next to Roberto Clemente. That was like, he was like the guy back then. Yeah. We were hearing, I mean, I wasn't old enough to even be around when he was alive. Even when I was little, he was like a mythical figure. Right. That's your baby. Well, that's, you know, you didn't see too many race teams with dogs. <laughs> I started it. <laughs> that's Harry. And he uh, he went to every race. All the officials knew him. And uh, I remember Steve Park came over one, one time to talk to me, and, the, and Harry bit him. And <laughs> 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 but uh yeah everybody everybody knew harry why didn't he like steve 
Well, he didn't like anybody. Just, yeah. He was very protective. <laughs> he liked to. Uh, yeah. He protected me. Anybody come around around me, it was so. Uh, it was not good. He <laughs> only weighed twenty pounds, but he was fresh. <laughs> I told Steve, Steve, don't take it personal. He bites everybody. He <laughs> laughed about it. When you had this hauler, did that serve as your motorhome too? Yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah, in the Arca deal, we'd just drop the trailer. And... So you have to drop the trailer and then go park in the RV lot? Yeah. Huh. It worked out really nice. That thing was 75 feet long. <laughs> I remember going to the California race and pulled onto the scales in California and got a $300 fine because it was 10 feet longer than what they allow. <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> oh, is that the Eldora truck? Yeah, that was after the Eldora qualifying race. And every team, except Clay Greenfields, of course, <laughs> was over there working on that truck. And Mike Hillman, is one of the best crew chiefs there are, was underneath that truck fixing it and I remember they, you know I was doing a bunch of interviews and Kenny Schrader come over and put his arm around me I'm doing this through and you know you finished and he says Norm uh, I know you're enjoying all these accolades but have you looked at your truck <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed and he said I'm taking it with me we're going to take it down the hauler and I guarantee you to be ready for the race and I'll I'll never forget that I mean Richard Childress is over there. Steve Turner had all three of his crews working on my truck after that qualifying race. Wow. So, like, and everybody was determined to everybody help Everybody in that infield wanted to see me in that race. And there was a lot of damage. That, you know, the rear end housing was bent. The right front frame rail was bent. Uh, there was a lot of damage, but they fixed it as best they could. And I went out and ran the race. But I'll never forget that. That's my, really cool. They said Mike Hillman jumped underneath it. They're, my guys couldn't even get near the truck. There were so many people working on it. <laughs> they were just standing there and on. I was standing there and on because I, I raced like that a lot on dirt and late models and stuff, and I, I never got that kind of response before, but I guess it was because it was Eldora, and it was, I remember Tony Stewart was the first one of the truck. Uh, he stuck his head inside before he even got out. He said, Norm, it doesn't matter what happens the rest of the night. You just made this show a success. So that was pretty cool. And that truck is now on his museum up there at Eldora. Really? Yeah. Like, is it still in its after the race form? Like, exactly. Like, did he never cleaned it? Nothing. Did he buy it from you after the race or something? Well, that's kind of a funny story too. Everybody wanted to buy it. I put it on eBay. <laughs> and I was getting all these offers to, for this truck. And then, uh, his manager, he didn't think of his name up there at Eldora. He called me up and said, Norm, you can't sell that truck. I said, why not? He says, history. It's a part of history. You need to get it over here. Tony wants it. So I, I, I took it over to Eldora. And it's, you know, Tony owns it now. So you donated it to the museum? Well, no, he helped me out. Oh, <laughs> he did buy it. I thought they were just swindled you out of selling this thing. And like, no, no just park no. it here. But it's really cool that it's enshrined like that forever. It's, yeah, it is. Just the way it came off the racetrack. Same tires, everything. We'll have to go see that someday. That's really cool. It's a shame Heinz didn't go for it. This is a really neat looking. Yeah, that was. Is this like a render? Yes. Is that what you were supposed to do? Yes. Oh, man. That sucks that didn't happen. That's a good looking truck. Yeah. I still would like to see it happen, but I know their marketing department and everything, they moved out to California and Heinz isn't really there, I don't think, anymore in Pittsburgh. But Yeah, they got bought by Kraft or something like that, yeah. and they're not really like. It's a shame. You never know, though. Somebody might value that at some point i hope they do yeah i'd love to change things up a little bit you know everybody wants to sponsor these young kids and mm -hmm. they really don't have a lot of experience mm -hmm. and they go out and, and destroy uh, stuff and uh a lot of them buy their way in they don't deserve the rides but family money gets them wherever they want to go i'd love to find a company that would sponsor and a veteran yeah. yeah somebody with a story you yeah. know I, just last week i was watching ryan newman there at martinsville he's still one of the best drivers out there but because of the equipment he's driving he's struggling and it's that simple you know if you're a football player basketball baseball whatever it's your talent 
Mm. In this business, if you don't have the equipment, you're not gonna you're not gonna be successful. It's that simple. Yeah. And it takes major sponsorship to to buy the equipment and the people. The people are very important. So I'd love to just for once just have a company f support me with top notch equipment, just so I could show them what I can do. At Daytona last year, in February, I had the fourth fastest car there. And that was the first time in my life I ever drove a Toyota. And I remember Luke from Ilmore was so excited. He came over and I told Luke, I said, Luke, I don't think I got full throttle. He said, you're fourth fastest. Yeah. <laughs> I said, you better check it. I don't think it's full throttle. But he really loved that. He, then the crew changed some things before qualifying and shouldn't have done it. It destroyed the speed in the truck. That was the end of that. But I'd love to go back there again with the right people and the right equipment in February. I guarantee it'll be a big story. I certainly would be. I think NASCAR needs something like that to happen, honestly. Yeah. It'd be good well, for Eldora, I, I, you know, and again, I people want to talk about that all the time. I'm kind of bored of that. I want to write a new <laughs> chapter, but I went viral on Twitter for three hours. And I was more popular than the Kardashians, and that's, that's saying something. Yeah. <laughs> And I didn't know that until years later, somebody had told me, but uh, you know, I remember Chocolate Myers talking about me on the radio all day long the next day. And I was driving home and my uh, Sirius radio head broke. And uh, the day before that, so I didn't, I missed it all, but he said that's all he talked about the next day was Eldora and that qualifying race. And I wasn't going home. Yeah, that's and awesome. I, I, you know, they talked about uh, Chastain riding a wall. They'd never seen that before, but mm -hmm. if they look at the Eldora qualifying race, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, into the wall about as hard as you can get <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and finished the race. But uh, Did you ever have a conversation with that Clay Greenfield guy after afterwards? Not too much. Is he pretty salty? Yeah, he, uh, he was sure he was a better driver than me, and he found out that... He wasn't, <laughs> but I had loaned him a, this is a story that a lot of people know. And this is, I had, I, he called me and begged me to bring a truck to, I think it was Kansas city for him to drive. I did. And it was actually the truck I was supposed to run the following week. It was my better truck. And he went out there and decided he was going to qualify. I mean, missed a gear, blew up the engine and the transmission. <laughs> Never told me. Came back and in, rolled into the garage and grabbed his stuff. And he said, "There's vibration." I shut it off. And left. Wow. And that's the backstory. Everybody thinks Clay Greenfield's a nice guy, and that's what he did to me. So he was not going to beat me at Eldora. Oh, that happened before two weeks. So you you three had a, weeks before that. Wow. Oh, man. You had extra motivation if there wasn't enough already. Yeah, and it's just sad that you know he smiles at everybody, but he knows. One of my crew guys heard him miss a gear. He was just driving through the tunnel. He heard it. Wait, say that again. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> the guy at Arizona made that for me. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. When people send me this stuff, you know, it's, it's really cool. A friend of mine, Brian uh, uh, Phoenix, sent me those two pictures. This is my favorite right there. A fan sent me that also, and uh, that's, that's my favorite picture. Eldora. I'm not big on my dirt stuff. I, that's that's, <laughs> that's a, Eldora. That's an area I'm lacking. That's Eldora, the start of the race, four wide. You know, when you're working on a project in a garage, you always need some kind of odds and ends. Usually for me, it's exhaust clamps because I'm always messing with exhaust stuff. And my go-to whenever I need something like that is Evil Energy. Evil Energy puts a lot of emphasis on their quality control and the affordability of their product to get your job done. I always have a bunch of these things on standby in different sizes and configurations because you never know when you're gonna get an idea and I'm gonna start doing something and I wanna have the stuff to be able to do it. 
Evil Energy has parts for many different applications from fuel systems, exhaust systems, and cooler system components too. They place a great amount of importance on putting the customer experience and quality of their products first. Providing safe and cost-effective tuning parts for car enthusiasts is what they live for. And you know a lot of our turbo builds like Uncle Rob here run on E85. Well, Evil Energy has a PTFE fuel line that is E85 safe. You can get 20 feet of 8AN PTFE line for $60. And if you've ever bought this stuff before, you know that's a great deal. They also have V-band clamps, exhaust cutouts. Three-inch V-band clamp assembly from Evil Energy is only $30. That's a great deal. You can even get a better deal on your order by using our discount code MS10 through the link in the description. Check it out. You can find their website in the description, ievilenergy.com. Thank you for supporting our sponsors who support racing history. What's kept you from to stay in NASCAR instead of doing other forms of racing, like going to Lernerville or something like that? Well, I have done that occasionally. Huh. I've run other people's stuff. And uh, I hope to do more of it. There's a picture of Tony back there. That was right after the race. He put his hat he was wearing, he put it on my head. <laughs> <laughs> like I started to say about this, these NASA people, they put that together and, and mailed it to me. What's on the CD? There's, it's just a, when they were building the shuttle. Oh. It's really, really a cool CD. And like I said, the, those guys were so smart. Uh, I wish I could have had them all the time. <laughs> I mean, they knew everything that there was to know about aerodynamics and everything else involved. I mean, That's really interesting how that translates. Yeah. I mean, they, they were doing some things. I didn't even know what they were doing, but they said, this will help. I said, okay, I won't question you. <laughs> you visit Oklahoma? Well, that, that that map right there is everywhere the Harry was. Oh, that's That's awesome. why it's up there. We need to do something like that for Shelby. You have a dog, too. Yeah. A toy Australian Shepherd. Oh. She's little. at Mitchell's mom's house. Yeah. She's about 10 pounds. How big will she get? She's full grown now. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, nice size. But Harry was... Uh, our mascot and he uh he loved being in that motor home we put the air on he'd go in there during the race and that picture there was a dover i believe a long time ago the gargoyle sunglasses just like earnhardt had <laughs> do you still have any of those oh yeah well, you should bring them back out next yeah. time you go to a race you come out with those things on <laughs> nobody uses them anymore i'm like why not they're awesome yeah i have them in fact that's crazy. Just yesterday, I was going through my drawer looking for stuff, and they were in one of the drawers. <laughs> Did you see the pillow? Yeah, somebody sent me all that stuff. <laughs> I rode the wall. I wonder if what they made. What does the bottom say? And never lifted. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like that. Did uh, Harry always walk around with his tongue out? Was that his all thing? All the time. <laughs> I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a little story about him. After we got him, I, I took him to Daytona. He was three months old. And we were in the infield in the motorhome. We stayed for the for the cup race. And he was on the back of the motorhome. And they had, did the national anthem. And then the jets flew over mm -hmm. and fired his afterburners and scared him to death. And then after that, the fireworks went off before oh, the race. Yeah. So after that, I could be sitting here and if a girl sings a national anthem on TV, he would get up and run around in circles and snarl and look <laughs> up thinking those planes are gonna fly over again. He never, the rest of his life, <laughs> forgot that, that moment in time. That's really interesting that he would associate the, the melody of the song with that. Right. And if a guy sang it, didn't bother. It was only when girls sang the national anthem, he would go crazy. It didn't matter if it was a football game, a beat, whatever it was. <laughs> if he heard that song, he would freak out. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog was he? Skipper Key. He's from Belgium. I don't know if I've ever heard of that before. Yeah, they're very rare. I remember when I went to get them, the lady said, you don't want this dog. They're not a, a, 
friendly dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up being, it took about six or eight years, but he ended up being a, like my bodyguard. <laughs> Dogs are irreplaceable. Yeah, and everybody says, yeah, just get another dog. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. No. No, it doesn't. They all got their own little personalities. So I, that, that, Harry is in the front yard under the holly bush. Hmm. We've got a little slate stone there and everything. Yeah, this is a Daytona. I don't know if we can get that clear. That's 10th. I remember testing at Daytona back when we could test. And Earnhardt was there and I was testing the cup card. We ended up 16th fastest. And Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Sr. was 18th. Hmm. And I saw him coming over. I thought he was mad at me or something. And he came over, he said, Norm, anything you need, you go right in that hauler and get it. That was the coolest thing. Wow. Because I was new. And he, I mean, I, Earnhardt was such a good guy. People don't know this, the stories about him, but he'd do anything in the world for people. I mean, he was, when he was racing, he wanted to win, period. But uh, outside that race car, he'd do anything for anybody. I heard some amazing stories about him. What did you do to get his uh, admiration like that? Like, does he, did he just do that because he saw you trying hard and yeah. respected yeah, he, it? He saw how hard we were working at the racetrack, and then we ended up a little bit faster than him. It was just, you know, test. But he still was impressed with that because we were a new team, and we didn't even know our way around the garage, and we were out there running pretty good, and that impressed him. Because he, he, again, he came up the hard way. He wasn't given anything. So he could appreciate somebody like me or other people that aren't born with, you know, Lots of money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. family money, you know, we had to work for it. And uh, he appreciated people like that. I think that's a lot of what makes like the races boring for me nowadays is because back in the day, people were racing, you know, out of passion and to feed their families. Yeah. And now you don't have that. No, it's a huge business now. It's sad the way it's gone. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't like it at all. and takes the wind out of your sails when some kid comes along that decides oh, I'll just run the trucks for a few races I'll go to cup yeah mm -hmm. I you know back when I started there were steps you had to take you had to have promoters at local tracks write letters and say you know if you were any good or not and then you'd you'd have to run ARCA short tracks blah 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 work your way up and now they're they have enough money they can do whatever they want you know run one arca race one truck race or whatever and mm -hmm. they're in cup and they're made it too easy for these people and every once in a while they they find out that without the experience like those guys that lose control on pit road and stuff like that one of these days they're gonna have a serious problem but sour grapes i mean I'm, i was one of the just the haves and the have nots and i was always the have not but i made the best of what i had and Every once in a while we would shine and get people's attention, but I still have, I, I love driving these things. I, I don't like how hard I have to work to do it, but I would love to do it one more year just with the right equipment and somebody that would support that. Hopefully this video can uh, help them find them. If someone does want to do that, how can they contact you? It's very easy. My, my phone number, I'm, I'm not afraid. I have Norm Bang Racing. Uh, website and it's uh, 412-600-2943 we'll see if what comes up hopefully something does yeah so uh, there are people in the business that still think I can do it but they know I just don't have the equipment what is the other truck you got in the trailer out there that's intermediate is that the one that you would have had at Wilkesboro yeah yeah can we see the, the other truck in there you really want to yeah I want to see it <laughs> flat tires yeah. <laughs> you wanted to see this Chevelle. It's a 1970 Chevelle. My dad bought it brand new. It's got 34,000 miles on it. And we brought it outside for you. 
you don't really see cars like this survive that well around here. They don't last if you drive them in the winter. Well, this this sits in the house. Did your dad drive it in the winter? No, it, it's never seen salt or snow or anything. I just lost my head. It's like a storage thing. That's like the added bonus of having an enclosed trailer is you got like an extra garage. Yeah. We got all the property behind me. Like I said, we were gonna we were gonna build a lot bigger, but it's residential area, so pit box. <laughs> is everything in here from when was the last time you used this stuff? Uh, I don't know, Pocono, I guess. Yeah, that's a lot better. NDIA, that's Glenn Beaver. He's been a huge supporter of mine for the last two years. And I believe he'll be involved in Daytona also. And him and his wife, and, uh, you know, they, they've helped me a bunch. What did this truck start as? This was a actually a Harvick truck. And then GMS got it, and then I got it. You know what year it was built? 13, 14, something like that, I don't know. Huh. I'm not sure, might be newer. There's an engine in it too. Yeah, let's see it. Here. So what is the stipulation if you're running an SB2 versus an Ilmore? What type of penalty do you have to take? Uh, I have a lot smaller restrictor plate. So I want to make sure that it's not as powerful as the Ilmore stuff. But I'm usually down 30 to 50 horsepower. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. That's why I can't even think about running mile and a half tracks with one of these engines. The short tracks and dirt, and uh, you can get away with it, but a mile and a half, you, you can't even think about it. How many miles do you get out of those before you gotta send them back to Dennis? Get a refresh? 1,200. That's a good bit. If you run it more, do they blow up or they just don't? No, the, the weak link is the valve springs. Ah. Uh. Because you, you tack these things pretty hard, and the valve springs usually, either the valve spring or the valve is the weakest link. Do you so, change springs yourself sometimes? Yeah, yeah. I, I maintain the stuff. Dennis does a great job. I mean, they've been with me for as long as I've been in the truck series and 16 years. Those guys are great. They've they've done a really good job for me. And Dennis said, when I run good, they sell more engines. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he said uh, you had an SB2 on the shelf there that was blown up for something that you wanted him to sell, and I was like, really? Where is it? I want to look at it. I have two of them out there. Actually, a cup, one of my cup engines from years ago is sitting there, and then a, a truck engine. What happened to them? They just need the one, something happened. I don't know, it wasn't bad, but something happened to it. And then the other one just needs rebuilt. Hmm. Yeah, I've always wanted one of those things. That's why I was asking him about it. I have a bunch of them sale, so. <laughs> I want to see what it looks like in here. Yeah, the seat never even been there. You got a white LaJoy seat. Yeah, that's I've, all I've ever had. I have a white LaJoy seat too. I didn't pick the color. It was uh, somebody had it and they didn't want it to be changed or something. So then I got it because it was like big enough for me. Yeah. And it was white already. So my seat's white. <laughs> I thought all of them were white. I have two of them. I've tried those Kevlar seats. I really don't with the inserts. And I like the LaJoy seats. I don't know what the difference is, how many people run the Kevlar. But I know that those are a lot more expensive with the inserts and all. Where was your shop at that you ran the Sobe car out of? It's right down the street, about a mile. Can we go look at it? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I think this stuff's important to document because a lot of people don't know that, that this is even exists anymore. What's that? Like, you know, doing it the old school way. I'm not proud of it. I wish I had plenty of dollars, but uh, we just do what we have to do. 
that's like most people would just be like, oh, well, I'm not one of those guys. I don't have the backing. So they would just quit, but you don't. And I think that's the yeah. cool part. Well, I've cut back since COVID. I mean, COVID really hurt everybody and everything, the sport and all. And because of COVID, I had to cut back to just a partial schedule. And uh, I'd like to run full time, but it's just not feasible without sponsorship. And uh, so I just pick, pick the races I like and I go. So anyway, this is uh, where the Sobe racing team was located. See all the scrape marks? Yeah. That's from my hauler. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> the scrape marks down the road, that's from my hauler. Because <laughs> it's dipped down there. Sobe hauler was right here, 75 feet long. Used to go down the highway and all the truckers would yell at me on the CB. It looked, <laughs> they really liked the way it looked. Went back it right up against the fence. And... You said this was, you had an automotive business in here? What were you doing in here? Yeah, I had state inspections and I sold cars and all different things. Huh. Just, but then we got that major sponsor, so I shut it all down, just turned it into a race shop. But I flew airplanes and did this on the side. We had three stalls and five race cars. So we'd always have something somewhere else being worked on. So we came out of here with the top five in the points out of this building. How did the Sobe deal come about? I fly airplanes uh, and I was flying a charter out of Allegheny County Airport. And uh, John Bellow had hired us to fly him so when we were done and we got where we were going i asked him if he'd be interested in marketing his product in nascar and he said i've heard a lot about nascar he handed me his card he said schedule yourself in for a meeting and we'll talk about it some more so i had a little my own airplane uh, cherokee got in the plane and flew up there a week later sat down with him and, and uh, Within two hours, just between him and I, we came up with a deal to, to race and uh, walked out of there with a $50,000 check. Had him for two and a half years and we were ready to sign a 10 year contract and then Pepsi and Coke decided Sobe was getting too big and they, they bought him out. 70% uh, of the company they bought for $287 million. <laughs> it was kind of ironic is it, it he part of the deal was he verbally told them that they needed to con continue the relationship with me. Pepsi said they would do that. And after they signed the deal, I, st I still have a letter from PepsiCo. They sent me a letter said, Norm, we really appreciate the opportunity to be involved in your race team, but we have a lifetime contract with Jeff Gordon. Wow. And that was the end of that. So I, I sent it to John. He went back to Pepsi and said, you just bought the rest of the company because that guy put me on the map. So that was pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so not too many people know that story. Well, they're not with Jeff Gordon anymore. Maybe the right marketing person would find that and maybe do something for old nostalgia's sake. You ever think about that? There's a lot of that going on now. Well, it's definitely something to think about. Yeah, get, get Norm Benning back in the Sobe truck. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be really yeah. cool. I'd love it. Because we have, I remember I used to send him a spreadsheet every week after the race where the money went and all the, you know. He called me one day, he said, Norm, do not do that anymore. Just keep doing what you're doing. He said, you're doing a great job. He said, I'm getting a lot of feedback. He said, just keep doing what you're doing. It was, like I said, I had to coax him for a contract. He was sending me money all the time, no contract, no nothing. Wow. And uh, he was a great guy. That's awesome. You know, Sobe was the first healthy refreshment drink. They had 28 different flavors. And Pepsi got the company, they cut it down to eight because that's all of it across the cooler. Hmm. Which was sad because that's what made Sobe great. All the different uh, flavors. And they were just about to put my race car on, on a bottle whenever this all fell apart. Man. I'd have been in all the coolers all over the country. And I was so looking forward to that. That's what's missing from a lot of the sponsorships now is like the activation on their end for like the, you know, the marketing in grocery stores and that kind of thing. <laughs> How long ago did you sell that hauler? I guess this road hasn't been repaved in a long time. 
Well, actually, it was repaved the year I got Sobe, and <laughs> I, I left my left my mark in the road. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever uh, shake down any of your race cars on this road? Like, you know, bed and brakes, leak test, anything? I actually, every once in a while, would drag a, a car from my house down to the shop with just a rope. <laughs> Oh, this is another funny story you probably shouldn't tell, but there was a policeman that lived here that didn't like racing or didn't like something. I don't know what it was, but I remember towing one of my cars down the road. It was Easter Sunday. <laughs> and he, he pulled in. He said, Norm, if I see you do that again, you're going to get a ticket. So I said, where are you going to be in a half hour? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm bringing another one down. He said, I'm telling you. I said, okay, well, I'm telling you, I'm bringing another one down. It was that quarter of a mile or something. By the time you load it and unload it, it just wasn't worth it. So before I headed down with the second one, I called the chief of police because I happened to know him. I pulled in there. He, committed, he put his lights on and everything in that lot. <laughs> he was going to act real important. And I... I think his name was Bill or something. I said, Bill, somebody wants to talk to you. <laughs> so the chief told him, get away from him and do not ever bother him again. <laughs> his face got red. He handed me the phone back and he left. <laughs> he said, that guy has given us all kind of exposure on TV and you're going to give him a hard time. So that was a funny story. That is funny. <laughs> like, there it is. That's where we work. You can get out if you want. You don't get a size of gate. Is that beware of dog for your dog? There's no, <laughs> no, there's no dog. <laughs> Did you start working in here after you stopped yep. using the the one yep. we just went to? Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's a big building. You can pull the hauler right right through that door. And as I said, if you look down there, they they have a trail that goes out through the woods there, and it's a Haunted Hills hayride. <laughs> I drive the tractors really? every once in a while. <laughs> uh -huh. So when you were running the the black and silver 57 cup car, was that done here? No, I don't know. That was the other building. Okay. I've only been up here like two years. Did you ever uh, keep any junk race cars or throw them in the woods or anything like that? Any relics? There's one over in Clareton that's up in the woods. The trees actually grew through it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old semi-late that I used to run on the dirt. Huh. Uh, this friend of mine in Barry, in Titusville, he has two or three of them. He has the, the cup car that uh, Earnhardt hit the deer with, or the, the deer, the bird. <laughs> You're freezing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I'm not from Pennsylvania. So. I don't know about you guys, but Norm is just a cool dude. I think everybody can learn something from the way he chooses to do things. And most of that is just choosing to do them at all. He doesn't quit. I'd love to see him run Daytona. If you know anybody, the company you work for, if you own a company, if you know somebody who works at a company that might be interested in sponsoring him for Daytona, make it happen. Let's try to make it happen. I think. It's a story that's been 30 years in the making. Wouldn't you want to see that guy just get get his shot, get his one shot with the good stuff and see what happens? It's also worth noting that uh, we were in Pittsburgh to film this video. We plan on filming it around Thanksgiving or Christmas, but we went up early because my grandma was in the hospital and she did pass away uh, shortly before we filmed this video. But we did get to talked to her and stuff the last few days before that happened it was a really uh interesting experience you know just figured i'd throw something like that in there because i mentioned it in the last video without getting too deep into it i learned a lot from her she was very honest with me about her life and about 10 years ago she straight up told me that she was not happy with her life she felt like she could have done so much more and that was really eye-opening to me because I saw 
what that must feel like for her to wake up and think that every day of being 85 years old. And in that moment, I was just like, I am never going to beat, I'm never going to do that. I do not want to feel that way when I'm older. I am going for it. And that's a big reason why I stand here today talking to a camera on a stick and you're watching it. <laughs> so just like that, I'm officially old because I now have no more living grandparents. Does that mean you're old when that happens? I, I don't know. But if you'd like to support the channel, you can check out staplesandautoworks.com. You like find the hat I'm wearing and that kind of stuff. But really, it would mean just as much or more to us if you would share or share this video, send it to a friend, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Let's get some support going for Norm. If he makes it to Daytona in February, I think it'd be really cool if we could be there. Um, Maybe that'd be part of the part of the sponsor package. If there's a company that's interested in doing that and having us be there as part of the thing, we would love to talk about it. So we'll see what we can do. You know, when you're working on a project in a garage, you always need some kind of odds and ends. Usually for me, it's exhaust clamps because I'm always messing with exhaust stuff. And my go-to whenever I need something like that is Evil Energy. Evil Energy puts a lot of emphasis on their quality control and the affordability of their product to get your job done. I always have a bunch of these things on standby in different sizes and configurations because you never know when you're going to get an idea and I'm going to start doing something and I want to have the stuff to be able to do it. Evil Energy has parts for many different applications from fuel systems, exhaust systems, and cooler system components too. They place a great amount of importance on putting the customer experience and quality of their products first. Providing safe and cost-effective tuning parts for car enthusiasts is what they live for. And you know a lot of our turbo builds like Uncle Rob here run on E85. Well, Evil Energy has a PTFE fuel line that is E85 safe. You can get 20 feet of 8AN PTFE line for $60. And if you ever bought this stuff before, you know that's a great deal. They also have V-band clamps, exhaust cutouts. Three inch V-band clamp assembly from Evil Energy is only $30. That's a great deal. You can even get a better deal on your order by using our discount code MS10 through the link in the description. Check it out. You can find their website in the description, ievilenergy.com. Thank you for supporting our sponsors who support racing history.